live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. The U.S. Secretary of Education visits a Rockford school. Administrators at Byers say they're honored to set the standard for education in the state line. Plus, experts warn college students to watch out for scammers. One local organization says a common trick centers around credit cards. And a pop-up food bank this weekend's in dire need of volunteers. Organizers say if you can't make it in person, there are other ways to support the effort. Good evening, I'm Amy Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. A Rockford woman is arrested after police say she called 911 nearly 700 times. Teresa Loans was taken into custody yesterday. Starting on August 31st, the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office 911 Center began receiving numerous 911 calls from the same number than the caller would hang up. Between August 31st and September 6th, a total of 694 hang-up calls were placed. An investigation led detectives to Lone's home where officers found the phone used to make the calls. Loans has been charged with false alarm to 911. The U.S. Secretary of Education makes a stop in the Four City. It was part of his back to school bus tour, Raise the Bar. The tour highlights ways public schools and communities are creating high level education. The Cal Delgado was there. To Cal, how'd it go? That's right, Eric and Mimi. Kids were excited to have special guests in their classrooms, but administrators are even more honored to be one of the schools that are setting the standard for education. When they're in kindergarten, when they're in first grade and second grade, they're ready to learn. U.S. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona stresses the importance of early childhood education during his visit to Bayer Early Childhood Center in Rockford. The first class we went to, um, the students were learning and they were talking to me in, in two languages. They were code switching right away. Like For them, it's just how they communicate. How powerful is that? Let's continue to nurture that. From family engagement to bilingual services to meeting the needs of children with disabilities, Executive Director of Early Childhood for the Rockford Public Schools, Kim Nelson, says the district's goal is to help every child learn and grow effectively. We have worked really hard to make sure we're maintaining the highest quality, building relationships with our children, focusing on their social emotional learning, and really staying true to the development of our young children so that they learn those foundational skills needed. This week, the U.S. Department of Education launched its Kindergarten Sturdy Bridge Learning Community Program. It's a multi-state effort to transform how students experience kindergarten. I want to make sure that children and teachers, staff and volunteers all across my district have what they need, the resources to be successful. Because I believe it shouldn't matter what zip code you're born in or the zip code that you live in to determine your level of education. The Rockford School District says it will continue to provide those fundamental opportunities for both families and the children as they enter the school system and will continue to raise the bar in education. And the work that we're doing in the Rockford School District is so important to help our children thrive. So all the work we're doing right now is a great foundation, but we need to continue to do more um, to support all of our children and families. The next stop for Raising the Bar bus tour is Madison, Wisconsin, talking about career and technical education. Mimi. All right, thanks, Nikel. Dozens of local organizations team up to increase state line literacy. United Way, along with nearly 30 other local literacy-focused organizations, announced a new program to improve Winnebago County's low rates. Just one in three children in the county are reading at or above their grade level. The new collaborative effort will use parental engagement, caregiver support, and community awareness to combat the problem. United Way's president says it's going to take the whole community to better the lives of children. It's going to take all of us, right? This is not a school issue. This is not, like someone was saying, this isn't just partners or parents. This is, uh, this is libraries. This is community centers. This is churches. This is neighborhoods. Yes, this is school districts, but it's everybody coming together and working on this together. Again, when we're talking about kids that are birth to five, needing to know their alphabet, be able to count to ten when they hit those school doors so that the schools can do their magic with them, it's going to take all of us. The program aims to increase literacy rates from 32 percent up to 75 percent by 2034. Experts warn college students to be on the lookout for scams when returning to campus. The Better Business Bureau says fraudsters look for opportunities to step in when students start spending money on tuition, school supplies and other items. 
phishing emails are one common tactic where criminals claim to be from the school's financial department. Another trick is offering fake credit cards to undergraduates, which allow access to personal information. Choose the credit card company that you want and then go online to that card company and make your application there. Uh, don't click on a link in an email that you get or a text message that you get because you don't really know where that link is going to take you. Uh, and this way you can be certain that you're dealing with a legitimate company and it's not someone that's going to uh, steal your, your personal and confidential information. The BBB also suggests students have mail with sensitive information sent to a permanent address, like a parent's house. Dorm and apartment mailboxes are not always secure, so scammers can easily access them. A pop-up food bank is in need of volunteers this weekend. We told you yesterday that the Northern Illinois Food Bank's hosting a pop-up grocery distribution event Saturday. Now they're telling us they need volunteers. Usually the food bank has 50 to 60 participants. Currently they have around 15 people signed up. The center operations manager says if you can't volunteer, there are other ways to support the food bank. The other ways, of course, is food, food donations. Those are always great. We'll accept those. Um, but by far, monetary donations, we get... Uh, um, we can definitely maximize any monetary do donation. For example, for every $1 we had donated, we can turn that in about $8 worth of food because of the, um, our sourcing um, abilities you know, and with the uh, companies that we work with. The food bank expects to hand out 600 food boxes this weekend. The clock is ticking for lawmakers to avoid a government shutdown. Up next, U.S. Senate leaders say they've got a tentative deal, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Our temperatures have been on the cooler side this afternoon, only reaching 70 degrees. We need the rainfall. We stay mostly dry into the weekend. Could see a couple of showers early next week. I'll time that out for you in the first warm forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News. You're a home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lever, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Lawmakers return to Washington this week with a big priority list. At the top is a spending deal they must pass by the end of the month to avert a government shutdown. Senate leaders say they've agreed to a stopgap spending bill with the House to keep the government's lights on for a few more weeks. But Anna Wernicke reports some Republicans are digging in until their demands are met. The clock is ticking for lawmakers to pass a spending bill and avoid a government shutdown. It's a crucial moment right now. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says he and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have agreed on a stopgap bill, giving lawmakers more time to pass all 12 appropriation bills. But even passing that short-term bill is proving to be difficult. I think Leader McCarthy knows that if a shutdown happens, it'll be caused by House Republicans. Several House Republicans say they will oppose any spending bill that doesn't meet their demands. Texas Republican Chip Roy said on X, a stopgap bill without cuts to programs conservatives oppose is a non-starter. But those cuts won't pass in the Senate, putting pressure on Speaker McCarthy to get a bill that can pass through the House by the end of the month. Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn says Schumer will be to blame for any shutdown. Pushing this up against the end of the fiscal year, which is the end of this month, is by design. The reason it frankly maximizes his authority and to cut a deal and uh, with threat uh, of a shutdown. Still, Schumer says he is hopeful McCarthy will get the job done when the House returns from their summer recess on Monday. He's going to have a rough time implementing it, but I hope he sticks to his guns. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. The American man trapped in a cave in southern Turkey talks about his ordeal after rescuers reach him 3,000 feet below the ground. 40-year-old Mark Dickey was on an expedition inside the Morka cave system when he became ill and was unable to get out. In the video message, Dickey said he's alert and talking, although not fully healed, and thanked the rescue teams involved and the international community that's sending him support. The caving world is a really tight-knit group, and it is amazing to see how many people have responded on the surface. Um, we're still waiting for communications to actually reach down here, so right now it's a a day to two days worth of travel for information to get back and forth. So I don't quite know what's happened, but um, I do know that um, the quick response of the Turkish government to get the medical supplies that I needed, uh, in my opinion, saved my life. Um, I was very close to the edge when Jessica got back to me. So many thanks to the Turkish government and the 
Turkish cavers that are helping to support the international community here. Dickey reportedly was suffering gastrointestinal bleeding. It's unclear what caused his medical issue. His rescue operation includes professionals from all across Europe, and it could take anywhere from several days to weeks to get him out, depending on the conditions and how much rest everyone needs. Drought conditions around the state line have worsened. Up next, we'll hear from Candace about how long it will be before we've got even a chance for significant rain. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, the latest drought monitor from the National Drought Mitigation Center continues to show those dry conditions across not only in Illinois, but also Wisconsin. In fact, in every category, those drought conditions worsening from last week to this week, given the dry weather that we've had. Even extreme drought conditions, a very small slither of that across far northeast Stevenson County and northern Winnebago County. Conditions are much more more worse to the north of us in Wisconsin, where they are dealing with not only extreme but also exceptional drought conditions. And just like here in Illinois, pretty much every category has expanded as far as those dry conditions. I wish I could say that we're going to see some rainfall going into the weekend, at least any significant rain just does not look like that. Our hope for some showers going into next week is there with a cold front that comes through. This will be lining up to the northwest of us Sunday night going into Monday, Tuesday of next week and this will bring us a chance for a few showers maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two prime time for that looks to be Monday into Tuesday with then some lingering showers lasting Tuesday night and possibly into Wednesday just depends on the timing of the front right now that precipitation looks to be under an inch which is far less than what we really need to help bring us up out of those drought conditions. And this is also a little concerning as we look into the middle here of September, higher probability for below average precipitation really kind of centered here over northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. And that kind of feeds into a cooler pattern that we could also be getting into towards the middle to end of next week. Average high temperature in the mid and upper 70s. Those numbers actually next week could be a good 10 degrees below that. So a little bit of cooler weather sticking around, somewhat similar to what we had out there today. Temperatures struggle to even make it above 70. 70, that was our high temperature so far today. We're down to 69 in Rockford, Freeport. Same thing in Rochelle. 70 in Sterling, Savannah, and 67 right now in Galena, our weather watcher. Terry in Genoa this last hour with a northerly wind, 68. Dew point temperature at 59. Cloud cover, something that'll stick around going throughout out not only this evening, but also the overnight temperatures tonight will drop down to 59 degrees. We'll maintain that northeasterly wind. We've got cloud cover that is most likely going to stick around for the first half of the day tomorrow. This again will have an impact on our temperatures, upper 60s, low 70s for our Friday afternoon, but we'll start to see things clear out a little once we get into Friday late afternoon and evening as high pressure builds in. All of this cloud cover, the results of low pressure working out through the eastern Great Lakes. You've got a couple of showers tied into a weak disturbance moving through parts of South Dakota back through Nebraska. This, for the most part, is going to pass to our west and southwest, but it may keep some of that cloud cover kind of sticking around. Notice even as we go into the day tomorrow, we've got clouds for our Friday. Small chance for a sprinkle or two just to the east of us. I think any measurable rainfall is going to stay fairly low at this point, but we should start to see things clear out once we get into Friday night. Areas of fog will be possible during that time leading into Saturday. Weekend looks pretty decent. We get a little more cloud cover, guys, once we get into Sunday, but then those temperatures drop back again by early next week. Big changes next week, right, Candace? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Wisconsin next with sports. The NFL season set to kick off tonight. He looks ahead to the Lions game against the Chiefs, and he'll have his predictions for the NFC North this season. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. It has been a long time coming, but the NFL season is here. It starts at 7:20 tonight when the Lions kick off against the Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium. The Chiefs will be celebrating their latest Super Bowl triumph before that game. Patrick Mahomes has never lost a season opener as the Chiefs starting quarterback, but the Chiefs' next two best players will both be missing tonight. Tight end Travis Kelsey is out nursing a hyperextended knee, and defensive tackle Chris Jones is a contract holdout. The Lions hope to pick up where they left off last season when they won eight of the last ten games. 
it's a challenge. That's why they they're the Super Bowl champs last year is because they're kind of they're good on every level. Obviously, their offense gets a lot of attention with those guys over there, but their defense is no slouch, and um, we'll have our hands full. They had a lot of young guys playing last year. You could see even throughout the season how they grew and got better and better. Um, and then they added talent. So is this the year that we're supposed to take the Lions seriously? I mean, they haven't won a division championship since 1993. They haven't won a playoff game since 1991. Well, I think we should take them seriously. I have them winning the division, but I'm not going overboard here. I have them going 10-7 and 7 and emerging on top of a very mediocre NFC North. And the Packers next at 8-9. and 9. I like the personnel on their defense, but all those former first-round draft picks have to produce. And I think Jordan Love and his young receivers just need more time to grow. I've got the Bears going 7-10. and 10. Yeah, they're better. That's more than double their win total from last year, but they're still not good enough on the lines, especially on the defensive line. Unless rookie tackles, Gravon Dexter and Zach Pickens are really fast learners. And the Vikings, they won a lot of close games last season. They'll tumble from the top to the bottom. Justin Jefferson can't win 10 games all by himself. In the AFC Championship game, I'm going with the Bengals over the Steelers. That's right, the Steelers. That's asking a lot of a team that has Kenny Pickett at quarterback. But the Steelers are loaded everywhere else, especially on defense. And in the cold of the playoffs, they'll be a tough out. And the NFC had the 49ers getting by the Eagle. Last year, the Niners were loaded everywhere, and even though Brock Purdy is young, I love the way that he reads defenses and makes quick, good decisions. At the end of the season, he could be in the conversation as one of the top five QBs in the NFL. In the Super Bowl, I have Purdy and the Niners defeating the Bengals to win it all. Well, the Cubs go after their fifth straight win tonight. They're going to host the Diamondbacks. At Sports, we'll be right back. Feeling much more fall-like out there today. It is. Yeah, nice cool breeze kind of coming in, open up the windows. But we've got some colder nights and some colder days ahead, too. Weekend, though, looks pretty nice. So at That's least we've good. got yeah, that to look forward to. Could be our last summer-type weekend. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? You just want to wait a minute. You just booed longer. me. You're I the one at the you. table who loves <laughs> winter and loves I snow. I do, I do. But I don't know if you I'm ready for all season. I still want you will to celebrate right? the first Sunny flakes that fall. You know. that, actually, is that too much to ask? Wow, okay. Well, and and rain overnight. <laughs> okay, let me go. Then a, little, order snow, it. Then a yeah. little snow around Christmas. <laughs> go, back to sunny in 75 a couple weeks get later. Get to my magic computer over there. <laughs> if anybody can do it, Candace can. I'll try. Don't let us down. I, I, oh, boy. <laughs> um, 59 for tonight. We're 72 tomorrow. And then low 70s. Not that next week. <laughs> Thanks, Candace. Stay safe.